Welcome to the TGI Friday edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas and Miller here in the wee wee hours of the day. Oh, my sleep schedule has been off, so why not come into the audio booth and get a little bit of work done? We are going to not only set up the weekend, but for some of you, we might be going to set up your holiday. So here's the deal. You know, we just had this amazing group come to North Carolina this past weekend. It's kind of like nobody wanted to leave, but everybody had to. One of those things, you know. But we realized that there were several who were not going to be with family this holiday. So what we put together is, well, this was very much a family, and we are going to continue it through the Christmas holiday. Now, all of the details on this are on the funastrology.com website if you click the red bar across the top. But let me take just 20 more seconds and tell you basically what we're going to do. There are fixed dates. You will see those on the website. We are going to rent a house and share the costs. So it's a split share kind of contribution situation. We don't have all the details on that piece locked down. We will this, well, at least by the end of the weekend. But what we do know is there, and what we are going to do, because we have a lot of juice behind this, is make it one of the most special holidays that anybody has ever experienced, especially if you are typically not with your family. We have had to limit this to 10 participants. Now, that can be a couple is two of the 10. We already have several, so there are slots open. If you would like to consider this, take a look at the information on the website. If it interests you, probably would be best if we got in contact by email and we can work out the details. Now, that is a big, exaggerated holiday plan. And why would we do that now? Well, because Jupiter is back in Pisces. So (laughs) why not? Why not do the holiday upright? Yeah, so Jupiter crossed over into Pisces early, early this morning. I was up to see it. 1.09 a.m. we had it come back in. This is really one of those mark every day on the calendar kind of days because it moves back into Aries for good December 20th. Short one week, we have two months. and It'll be 12 years. A couple of other interesting additions to the weekend. Now, that's it for today. No other major aspects in the sky today. But tomorrow, the moon moves into Capricorn. That's at 9.21 in the morning. Good, consistent, stable, get things done and do them well, Luna, for Saturday, Sunday, and a little bit of Monday. Tomorrow afternoon, Mercury enters Scorpio. So we really stack the deck with a super stellium in Scorpio. So as of tomorrow afternoon, that will be the south node, Venus, the sun, and now Mercury, all in Scorpio. I'm feeling special for my birthday here. We've got, what, a third of the planets are in Scorpio. Y'all welcome. Pull up the covers. Here we go. Now, remember, we talked yesterday or the day before that Mercury really screeches through Scorpio, though. November 17th is the exit. So it's, what, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 days. But as we had the solar eclipse this week, we will have the now total lunar eclipse on November 8th. The full moon will be in Taurus at 16 degrees. I just listened to the recording of the Robert Glasscock Solar Arc Practicum from this past Wednesday. Fascinating conversation. I mean, this was group discussion like you couldn't believe. I didn't get to hear it in person because I was crashed out after a long drive to take uh, Hemet to the airport. But lots of surprises And Mars turning retrograde is a big piece of it. That happens Sunday morning at 9.25 a.m. Mars's pace, if you ever just speed up an astrology wheel and you watch Mars pace, it's an interesting study. Not as erratic as Mercury, but it can get in there and jiggle and jaggle a little bit. And right now it is crawling so slowly that this morning at 7 a.m. it will be at 25 degrees 34 minutes in Gemini. And it only needs three more minutes before it stations. So it is that slow. Two days, Saturday, Sunday, three minutes in the sky. And remember, we're under this moon wobble until it peaks on November 5th and then tails out for another seven days. There was that earthquake in San Jose this week, 5.1, fortunately not that severe. But if you are coming from that feeling that you can just feel in your bones, 
that something is out there, well, you're not alone. One of our dear, dear listeners who is on our Facebook page quite a bit had a house fire, a, con- a, t- a townhome fire, I guess, where she lives, and is out of, I mean, displaced for six months or more. And she's just had a little baby back in May. That's moon wobble stuff. I'm going to be doing a video for her later today that will be posted on our Facebook page. If you would like to help, there are ways you can, and they do need it. We would appreciate it. Check back later this morning or up around noontime, and that will be available. We'll also bring it up again on Sunday night on Level Up, 8 o'clock p.m. on the YouTube channel, Fun Astrology Podcast, and also on the Facebook group. Now, you would think, now, Thomas doesn't, Mars moving backward take a little bit of its intensity out? Yes, that's a great observation. That's not the main focus of this Mars retrograde. What is the main focus are the degrees that it's going to cross back over twice, one of those being the exact degree of the United States Mars, which is in Gemini at 21 degrees 22 minutes. Mars has already hit it once. It will hit it again on the way back and then turn around and hit it one more time on the way out. Three degrees back from that is where that Saturn-Uranus square occurred. Remember, that was for 12 days, the beginning of this month, that it sat there and baked at 18 degrees. You know how they say, let a sleeping dog lie? Well, not here. (laughs) Let's bring Mars back over that point, with Saturn still there, by the way. The good news of this chart that I like a lot right now is that Jupiter, even though in retrograde, is back in Pisces with retrograde Neptune. You know, it will be another at least 155 years before Neptune crosses back into Pisces. So if we just set the shadow of Pisces aside for a minute, which we can't do full time, but I just want to focus on the positive we're in the re-mode, re-evaluate, reassess, realign, revise, revisit, and probably the biggest one, release. Oh, let that sink in. So the two rulers of Pisces, the connection with the home office, our connection with ourself, our higher self, the regeneration, the redemption of Pisces, and its two rulers for the next 150 years are back together until December 20th. Enjoy every day of that. We won't see it again in our lifetimes. Ah. Hey, I've got a birthday in here, too. Okay, I better get out of here. (laughs) You guys have a great weekend. I'll see you back on Monday. Ray Merriman tomorrow. You bet we will. So I'll see you then as well. 